Today we are taking a look at price correlation between booster box sealed pricing and PSA 10 chase card pricing. And I'm a very visual person, so I like to see uh, charts and graphs like this a little bit. And we color coded it, and I'm going to break it all down. So this is a series that we've kind of done before in the past. It's been a little minute since we touched on it. We've added a few more sets to the list, and we changed a little point uh, rating. So hopefully we can this can help us learn what sets are best to invest in long term, and we can kind of see uh, what sets are better for boxes and what sets might be better to just get the chase card in a PSA 10. Now, I know that not everybody gets PSA 10s and not everybody collects sealed, so it just kind of gives the best of both worlds. So um, we got a lot of Sword and Shield and we got a lot of Scarlet and Violet on here and then we got some Sun and Moon era stuff as well just to kind of, you know, even it out a little. But what we went ahead and did this time, so uh, we've been using the color coded system for uh, a while, but what I did as you guys can see over here, as I just assign points, uh, we're going with the higher the points, the better. So the bright green being five, four, three, two, one, as you guys can see over here. And I kind of tried to um, put them in different price categories that I thought made sense from uh, an investing standpoint. Now that being said, uh, we're gonna start with Evolving Skies and work our way down. Just because something is in the red uh, doesn't mean that I think it's a bad investment because if you a few videos back, if you guys watched, I do think that Evolving Skies is one of the safest investments that you can make. Um, and I do stand by that for the booster boxes sealed because, uh, and that's mainly because of kind of where Team Up is, is and I think it's gonna be very proven long-term that Evolving Skies is gonna do very well. But I think that the these brighter green ones have more chance for a higher upside. So um, percentage wise. So that's I think that's kind of where that's coming from. So red doesn't necessarily mean stay away, but just wanted to touch on that. So obviously set number one, Evolving Skies. Uh, these booster box prices as of the recording of this video are from TCG Player and then the Chase Card PSA 10 prices are from eBay. So 675 in the red and then 1250 for the Umbreon. Now that ratio isn't quite as bad. Uh, you can see it's kind of this other uh, like orangey color and it's you know 1.85 times the uh, the booster box price is what the chase card price is. So if you're factoring that into um, into the equation, which it is it factored, we got one one and two gets us to four points. So overall, probably um, not the best for potential uh, percent increases. However, but with this being not in the red. That would indicate to me, if we're looking at this, that if you're going to go for one of these, it should be for the booster box because it's not exceeding the uh, chase card price because that can be a problem sometimes when the uh, when there's no good, essentially when there's no good chase cards. And um, if you guys want me to do this for like the with the raw prices or with anything else, let me know. But um, for now, this is what we're doing. Next up, Fusion Strike, another great set. Uh, not nearly as expensive. Uh, we got in the yellow here, 244 box currently, and the Gengar, beautiful card, uh, 600. And now, as you can see, what, what this does for that percentage-wise is that it's a darker green. So this is our first one that's in the nine points. So for me, if I'm looking to invest, I'm going Fusion Strike boxes and possibly a Gengar, uh, you know, in a PSA 10. But between, if these are my choices right here, and I had to pick one, I'm, I'm going to pick the booster box. I think it makes a lot more sense. It has a great ratio here. People will still at this, you know, if you're picking up to chase that Gengar, I think that's really good. Next up, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, I'm pretty uh, high up on Lost Origin. And you guys will see why right here. It's because of this green ratio. So the boxes have dropped a little bit. And this is kind of an interesting time to do this because a lot of these alt arts and some of the booster boxes have... Um, cooled off a little bit from their from their run up so uh we had the the, the booster boxes dropped down to around 200 bucks and the giratina i think it had it might have it was definitely over a thousand or at a thousand for a while uh in a 10 now it's down to 700 so but this ratio is looking real good so this is our first box that lands us in the double digits for the overall points so um, the Giratina, I would say, if you guys are looking to invest in Lost Origin, it's boxes all day long, easy. Um, this kind of, yeah, so this ratio kind of more correlates to the, to the box price.
So um, while it's a little bit more expensive, it's in the $200 range uh, compared to some of these other ones that we're going to touch on. I don't think you can go wrong personally with Lost Origin booster boxes. I think uh, I think that's the way to go. Then we have uh, Brilliant Stars, which is very interesting as well. We got the two of the darker greens here, 184 for a box and 300 for that Charizard. I still think that that Charizard is undervalued. Uh, I will die on that hill. I've said it before. I'll say it again. That That is the best Charizard artwork we've ever gotten, just my opinion. Um, I know it's a high population in a PSA 10, but so is the Umbreon, and Charizard carries some weight. So I think that long term, that uh, that both of these are very good pickups for long term and the ratio is not quite as good because the um, PSA 10 price is lower right so it starts you know it's still in that same category but the the box the chase card just isn't like that much more like if you're looking at Lost Origin it's not you know 3.5 times the price so this is one of those sets where for me um also, I, I try and be transparent on the channel. So, like, I have multiple of this card in a PSA 10. Uh, one to just keep for my collection long term, and then another one to flip. Uh, it's not like I'm sitting on a ton of them. I got two. but uh, And I got some boxes of Brilliant Stars. So, that would be uh, my... For this set, with this chart, or uh, this color setup on this, I would say get both. If you can. If you can swing it. Because I think they're both good investments, and they're both good set, uh, good set and good chase card. So, uh, Brilliant Stars, pick them, pick them up both. Um, Chilling Rain, uh, it, just above 200 at 215. And then the Blaziken. Um, I do like the Blaziken card. I'm not the biggest on it, but 400 in a PSA 10 currently, it's dropped quite a bit. Um, it's kind of in that same uh, price here for the, or, uh, for the ratio, sorry, color. And 215 and 400. So, this one makes it a little bit tougher. It's kind of... It's almost in that same exact category. I mean, you could fudge this and make this the uh, into this color, and that would put it into a ten. And you know, arguably, I mean, we saw if you guys saw Cool Trainer Ryan, he took forever to pull the Blaziken. So, with that being in mind, it's kind of the same thing. I would pick up both if you can, but um, for me, I would probably lean towards the Blaziken personally, um, but. If I had to pick between the two. Next up, Silver Tempest. This is still in stock on the Pokemon Center, so this is interesting. Uh, if you guys want to risk getting those um, from the Pokemon Center, you could get this price down to, uh, let's fudge that number real quick. It would be um, 143, right? So that boosts this ratio up, but anyways. Um, so this is what they're going on TCG Player. I do think that both of these cards, I think that this Lugia is undervalued for long term in a PSA 10. Uh, we have a good ratio. It's just over two to one for booster box pricing. So uh, if I had to pick one, I would be picking up Silver Tempest booster boxes, especially if you can get them for Pokemon Center pricing at MSRP of 143. I think um, that is kind of the no-brainer here. But the Lugia is also kind of one of those ones where, well, if you could if you could pick up both. Um, what's interesting about this is uh, this is one of the highest uh, point totals that we have over here at 13 points. So if, if we're wanting to use this uh, this point system as an indicator of what sets will perform the best long term um, overall, it's saying that Silver Tempest has a lot of growth potential. And I, I would agree that a lot of these sets, that that's why that these sets right here, when we get into the Scarlet and Violet era, they have the most growth potential and that's what this is showing. Um, because long term they're going to do really well and they're at super affordable prices so um keep that in mind that uh do with that information what you will I, we don't really exactly know how this is going to pan out long term but that is very interesting to see silver tempest at 13. so obviously the max price here um which i don't think it's possible but it would be like a 15. so yeah 5 10 15 and that would be pretty crazy uh but we got a few that come real close Next up, we have Scarlet and Violet uh, base set, and I am high. I I like Scarlet and Violet base. I think it's an underrated set. Uh, you can get it sub 100 a box, and maybe if we adjusted some of these and had um, only the sub 100 being bright green, that might change things. I might fudge the point system later, um, but 95 a box and 
recently uh the gardevoir on tcg player just overtook the miriam which is interesting and that is something that i did call uh a while ago saying that i think the gardevoir should be the the number one card um this one here uh the psa 10 price that i think that this card is still undervalued in psa 10 uh long term the ratio is not very good you can pick up the psa 10 gardevoir right now on ebay for like 110 uh so with this ratio being like this i would be picking up the gardevoir um in psa 10 multiple copies if possible and boxes this is like kind of a no-brainer to me even if it ends up being one of the weaker sets from scarlet and violet i still think it's underrated then we have the kind of the one of the big dogs from uh the scarlet and violet era paldea and these boxes are still affordable at 135 a box and the magic carp's going for 610 but look at this ratio this is the highest ratio we've seen right here 4.4 times the uh the chase card in a 10 is 4.4 times the booster box price so that to me screams booster boxes we got uh 12 on the point system so still pretty high high investability um go for paldea uh booster boxes sealed i would be loading up on those with the caveat of i do think that this is going to get a reprint so i've said it before i would probably hold off because we're going we are highly likely to see a paldea reprint uh, coming by the end of the year so just keep that in mind but long term um you know if you if you're buying these boxes at 135 and say uh in a few years you're looking at 240 300 400 dollar prices potentially then you're not going to really be too mad if you bought them at 135 so um do with that what you will then we have paradox rift uh which is another i think kind of underrated deep set uh 99 a box 200 for the roaring moon uh and it's like two times the uh price there if i had to pick between the two i'd probably go for booster boxes personally but um i do have uh i have one copy of the roaring moon in a 10 and i got a f just a few uh boxes there uh, of paradox so I do think that uh, you can't really go wrong with either any of these if they're in the green, but I would lean towards the boxes. Um, another set that I said was undervalued, and we've seen a recent uh, uptick in price a little bit, up to 112 a box, is Obsidian Flames. I know not the strongest set, but I do think that that Charizard Chase card is nice. So now we got 1.9. So these are all 14. These next, All these next sets are 14 points, which it says high investability if you're reading the charts that way. Once again, we don't know exactly long term, but 112 a box, 220 for the chase card. Um, my gut tells me that for the chase card here uh, on the Charizard, that this is going to just increase, is going to climb in value. That's just more of a gut thing. Um, so this is another one of those ones. If you can get both, um, I'd pick up, you know, one or two Charizards. It depends. It depends on your budget, obviously. Um, and depends on what you're wanting to do. I always try and have, uh, if possible, like two copies minimum of everything. When I can, obviously I'm not doing that on everything. I can't afford that, but one to sell and then one to keep in my PC. And uh, so yeah, boxes, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those. Then Temporal, um, I haven't been the highest on Temporal in the past, and that is okay. Uh, you're, not every set is gonna be like a out of the park uh, winner for you. But if you look at this chart, it's scoring just as well as these last boxes we talked about. We got bright green, bright green, dark green. So uh, 109 a box and 250 for the Raging Bull in a 10. Uh, so 2.2, the highest ratio of these last few um, from box to PSA 10 pricing. So that would indicate to me, I would lean towards the boxes here at 109 a box uh, for a long-term hold. And these are right here, all these Scarlet and Violet era and these 14s are our best what this point system is telling us is these are our best uh, future investments for long-term uh, percentage gains. So take that for what you will. And I mean, that would make sense, right? Because these are the cheapest boxes that you can get. And years down the road, you know, they have the most upside. So um, that does add up. Next up, uh, obviously, Twilight has been going crazy. We got 125 a box already. And the Greninja, is kind of, it's kind of like in the Paldea, almost exactly in the Paldea... Um, setup right here the greninja uh psa 10 last sold was like 600 um so 4.8 times the booster box price once again this screams to me buy the boxes i would be buying the boxes all day long 
and I would be avoiding the Greninja um, at this price point. Not, I don't think that this is sustainable for this card for the long term. Um, so we got 12 on the point scale, which is pretty good. Um, and so yeah, Twilight Masquerade, eat up those boxes. That would be my advice. Then uh, we'll touch on Team Up real quick. And Team Up last sold at twenty three seventy five a box, which is crazy. It's exciting to think about uh, what that Evolving Skies might be able to touch that number. It's just kind of crazy. But um, this one is for the ratio is horrible. The box is more expensive than the PSA 10 price at 2375 to 2100. Uh, so it's like a 0.88% ratio there. Um, so honestly, at that point, I'm going to go probably for the boxes. Maybe. I don't know. This is tough. This is like one that I'm just going to avoid personally. I don't know. So this is where it starts to get really tough, and that's a lot of money. But then right here we have something that's uh, very interesting, I think, and, you know, kind of in the same manner, is Cosmic Eclipse at 975 bucks, but 475 for a PSA 10. So this would indicate to me I would be avoiding boxes and buying uh, the the Arceus Dialga Palkia in a 10. Um, but once again, these are kind of sets that I'm kind of staying away from. And then we have another crazy one here, finishing off with Burning Shadows. The boxes are 430, but the, the, the chase card's really hard to grade in a 10. So uh, this might be one of those sets where maybe the, the 10 price isn't the best example and we should be using the raw price. Um, but this ratio is the highest ratio on here at 5.4 times. So if you're going to be looking at investing in Burning Shadows, I would be picking up sealed boxes personally. I think that obviously is the way to go there. So that is sort of going to do it for this one, guys. I just wanted to uh, make this video and kind of just touch on, um, you know, PSA 10 to booster box prices. If there's anything we can like pull from this information, uh, I like I said, I'm a visual person, so I like seeing the colors, I like seeing the numbers, and hopefully this will help you guys understand like where things are at, where things could go. We got like three different eras in here. If you guys want to see more of this, um, just let me know, leave me a comment. Uh, if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content, so uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you guys in the next one, and remember, it was never a phase.